Hello mountain bike friends. Today we are going to talk about mountain bike seats or saddles as people like to call them and I'm going to do my absolute best to demystify the confusing topic of these things and why there are so many options. We're going to cover the most popular ones and what most mountain bikers are using, why you might want to care a lot or care not so much about your saddle choice depending on the type of riding and frequency of riding, and quick interviews with different types of riders. So let's get into what, what in the butt. I said what, what in the butt. Well, if you want a cheat sheet on what are just the most popular saddles and best saddle brands for mountain bikes, um, that's what I'm gonna go over right now. And then a little bit later, we're gonna get more in depth on why you might choose which model from one of these brands or any other brand. So there are two brands that have just absolutely dominated our top selling saddles forever since the opening of Worldwide Cyclery nine years ago. And that is Ergon and WTB. Um, we do sprinkle in some other brands there like SDG and Didi, but Ergon and WTB, between their vast amount of models, they've dominated like the top 20 best selling saddles for us forever. So those are two really key brands that you've probably seen on a whole bunch of bikes throughout history and who've been in the saddle game for a really long time making really nice stuff. So which models from each brand are popular? Ergon, SM Pro, SMC Sport Gel, and the SM Enduro, WTB, the Volt, Pure, and Silverado, and SDG, which is kind of an iconic classic mountain bike saddle, is the Bel Air RL, and this is the original Bel Air design. And for some more looks, style points, Deity Speed Trap. Um, these brands and these saddles, again, are pretty much just loved by mountain bikers and a lot of people are using them and enjoying them and it's a very common upgrade. People are also getting these. Keep in mind, a good number of these models have been around for several years. So some people are just getting one of these stock on a bike that they bought and they really liked it. They like how it fit and how it felt. And then they just stuck with it for a decade. They just always said, I'm getting a new bike. I'm putting a Bel Air on it, like hands down. I don't even care. I don't even want to try another one. And that is personal preference, which saddles are very much personal preference. If you find one that works for you, that's really comfortable and works great for the bike you ride, the type of riding and how often you ride, maybe just stick with it and don't bother messing around with different ones. But those are the brands that are really key to look at in the mountain bike saddle world. And now let's get into more details on which models might make sense for you. The level of detail and testing and pickiness you put into which saddle you're gonna, I said saddle, damn it. Redo. The amount of effort and pickiness you put into your saddle choice needs to directly correlate with how often you ride and how long those rides are. So if you're a very, very casual rider, you're gonna want just a more padded saddle because you're probably gonna be on a more casual bike where you're a little bit more upright. That's why you see big padded saddles on beach cruisers and city bikes and things like that. And then when you get to the road segment of the world, um, it gets way, way more complicated because road riders don't stand up out of the saddle as often as mountain bikers and they're on the bike for an extensive amount of time with no suspension and you know 110 PSI in the tire. So totally different category. Most mountain bikers, in my opinion, what it seems like, ride less than 10 hours total per week, right? So most of us, I think, are weekend warriors. Even if you're riding three to five times a week, you're probably not putting in more than 10 hours on the bike. And when you're in that boat, it's not extremely important when it comes to saddle choice. Granted, there is exceptions to this. Some people have more sensitivity down there. You grab my ass. And different scenarios where you know, certain saddles really bother them and other saddles don't. If you're riding sort of, you know, less frequently, like say you ride once a month, you're never really gonna sort of like build up the muscles and get used to that feeling of being in the saddle. So every time you ride, you know, one hour a month, you're gonna have kind of a sore butt and your sit bones are gonna be sore. And the more frequently you ride, you kind of just get used to that whole thing. So when it comes to padding, um, a good chamois is key and saddle choice, well, you could, you could sit and dissect it all day, but my recommendation is if you're only riding, you know, not very often, maybe, you know, one to two hours a week, go with something with a little bit more padding. Um, for example, 
Ergon has the SMC Sport Gel. This is a very nice padded saddle and feels super cushy. And it's definitely on the side where um, it's a little heavier because of that. But people who aren't riding as frequently are gonna find this more comfortable. Another very popular one in that realm is the WTB Pure. I also personally love the WTB Coda. That's what I use on my gravel bike, which has no suspension, a little bit more padding. Um, and the WTB Volt. So that's another, you know, medium or thick padded saddle in the mountain bike scene that is very popular because of that. If you're riding a bit more frequently, let's say three to five times, you can probably shave off some of that padding and some of that weight and you'll be more comfortable and feel better on something a little bit more stealth and aero and streamline like the Ergon SM Pros or the WTB Silverado. Um, most saddles, if you look at the different price points, a lot of that has to do with the rail material. So steel chromoly is gonna be the cheapest and you have alloy and tie and carbon. Um, that's gonna change the weight of the saddle and some bit of comfort and flexibility to it. But yeah, saddles get confusing and I've always kind of told people to really try not to overthink it too much. It doesn't matter what you think. Uh, usually what makes you feel more comfortable on your bike is where that saddle's positioned in the saddle fitment. And that fit is much more important, again, the more you ride. So if you're on the bike 10 plus hours, don't just watch this video. Watch several other videos, read articles, um, learn about the different fitment systems of sit bones and how you can measure that. Also look into like physique's whole concept of your flexibility. Um, dive into Ergon. Ergon has a ton of interesting education on that stuff because they have some of the most complex and just like intricate saddle designs and innovative engineering in the business when it comes to that. Um, if you're riding less than 10 hours a week, don't get too caught up in it. Um, check out some popular models. Um, maybe consider what you're using now. If you like it, if you don't like it, you know, what you do and don't like it. Some people really like um, the relief channels in here. Again, very personal preference. Some people really love and swear by this. Other people don't really mind it or don't really care for it. Um, some people got a saddle on their bike 15 years ago and it was a Bel Air and they fell in love with it and that's all they ever want ever, period. Um, that's totally okay as well. So. Factor that in. Uh, if you have a downhill bike or a dirt jump bike and you want something flashy that looks really good, DD kind of crushes it in that realm. So do some other brands like Chromag. Um, hopefully that like demystified it and didn't make it any more confusing. I want to show you guys some interviews and takes on what other people think. So candid, quick questions where I'm not going to tell uh, a number of our staff what question I'm going to ask them and I'm going to ask them to answer what their favorite saddle is and why in 30 seconds. And I think you'll probably find out that not the most common average mountain bikers are not incredibly picky about it and they don't really need to be. Dude, I like the trough. The trough? <laughs> saddles are tough. Some people, again, are more sensitive and do need to test out a lot more saddles and really get more deep into the fitment of things. And especially, no matter who you are, if you're riding over 10 hours a week or for really long periods of time, you do really need to get into more testing and more fitment related stuff to make sure you're comfortable, you're not cutting off circulation or anything like that. So I'm also gonna interview a good friend of mine, Jonathan Lee. Um, this dude is a phenomenal mountain biker, a phenomenal road biker, and puts so many miles in on the bike, it is insane. And he has much more knowledge when it comes to fitting and saddle preference and choice and that sort of stuff if you're in that 10 plus hour. So definitely check out his interview if you do ride a ton um, or you're on cross country or road side of things. And uh, yeah, let's go interview some guys and see their uh, quick thoughts on what their favorite saddle is and if they even know or care. What is your favorite saddle and why? The Ergon SM Pro, because Nate Hills rides it. He doesn't even wear a chamois. He said that in a video. <laughs> what is your favorite saddle and why? Whatever comes on my bike. I mean, whatever comes on my new bike. Perfect. <laughs> what is your favorite saddle and why? It definitely has to be the SM Pro because Jared rides it. <laughs> How many hours a week do you ride? I, I would say close to 10 to 20. You're a liar. Oh, all right. Yeah. 
Not as much as I would like to right now. And saddle choice is entirely because Jared rides it? Yeah, I trust Jared. <laughs> What's your favorite saddle and why? I don't run a saddle. Oh, that's nasty. What is your favorite saddle and why? Oh, you know, I've actually been practicing barebacking on my Mustang. It's been real rough, but it's fun. I actually only run the Physique on Tara's saddle because when I was racing and riding all the time, that's the only one that did not mess up my butt. And you just rode it ever since. And I've ridden it ever since. I think I've been on it eight or more years now. So those are the thoughts of the average common mountain biker folk. Now let's go to Jonathan Lee, who spends a lot more time in the saddle on a bicycle than most humans ever will and see his thoughts. Number one, I think the first priority for people should be to film what they're doing right now on the bike. And that's pretty easy to do. Have your friend film behind you when you're riding or go on a trainer and just film behind and then film from the side. If your hips are rocking side to side like that, your sit bones aren't properly supported. That's a big thing. When you look at the side, if your pelvis is tilted really forward, really far back or neutral, those three scenarios, you wanna identify in which one you fall. So number one, first priority should be proper sit bone support. They're called ischial tuberosities. They're basically the, the points on your pelvis that make contact with your saddle. They push through your soft tissue and make contact with your saddle. Those aren't properly supported, no saddle's gonna be comfortable. And this happens a lot like uh, on saddles. I know a lot of people like, like the WTB Silverado, something like that, but that saddle gets really narrow really quick. So a lot of people don't have properly supported sit bones with that. Uh, conversely, if you have one that's super wide, your sit bones may be supported, but then it's just rubbing into your legs right there, like the gluteal cre crease right below your, or at the top of your thighs, it's super uncomfortable too. So you need to find how your sit bones are going to be, pro be properly supported. And there's a super easy way to do it at home. Just take a bag of flour, put it in, or take a Ziploc bag, fill it with flour, get all the air out of it, put it down on a hard surface and then sit on it. And when you sit on it, lean forward so that your weight, your chest is like against your thighs. And then you'll have two bumps in that, in that flower and just measure those bumps. If it aligns with the width of your saddle, then you're probably in a good place. And that's a really good spot. Once your pelvis is supported, you'll be a lot more comfortable, less rocking. Uh, you'll be able to even put out more power. It's much better. But from that point forward, it becomes about comfort. And if you're an anterior pelvic, uh, pelvic tilt person, meaning that your pelvis is tilted forward, like your butt's sticking out and your stomach's going forward, if that's the case, then you're really going to want a saddle that has a lot of open channel and open space in the front and probably a shorter nose. Uh, there are a lot of people that argue that you should be neutral or posterior pelvic tilt, but if you are what you are, just make sure you get the saddle that you need for that. If you're posterior, you probably want something that has like some curve in it. So those like uh, really goofy looking like bird's beak, SLA, SA, SLM or whatever those ones are, that might be for you. And then if you're a neutral person, you might want a flat saddle that you can kind of scoot forward and back on. But the main thing is, you know, after you get your sit bones supported, it's all about finding the shape that's the right comfort. And that's where those cut in, those cutaway channels come in, the holes, all that stuff. So that's honestly, it's, it's pretty simple. Take comfort and break it down, supporting your sit bones and then making sure that it's not pushing on soft tissue anywhere because of how you're tilted or shaped. Once you get those things out of the way, you'll find a saddle and a saddle, there isn't just one saddle for you. Chances are there's tons of saddles that can work. So you probably don't have to be crazy ultra specific on it. One really good point with this too, is the fact that every saddle will feel, will feel uncomfortable at first. Yeah. Like totally. you, you have to get used to it. So if you just get on your bike and your saddle's uncomfortable, well, how long have you been spending on that saddle? Is this a brand new one? Or have you taken a long time off the bike? Your saddle might be uncomfortable. It's just your body getting used to things. And many times, I think we change saddles trying to find the perfect one, but we never give our body the chance to get used to the saddle that we're using. And I think that there's definitely, you know, an, an issue with that. So if you can simplify it and give your body some time, it'll, you'll find it, uh, yeah. the right one. So, well, I hope that helped you guys understand mountain bike saddles slash seats. Um, there's definitely a lot of choices out there. So 
don't get too freaked out and, uh, and freeze up in decision paralysis like you can with a lot of things in the mountain bike world. It doesn't need to be too complex. Um, and you'll probably realize in the mountain bike scene, most people kind of pick a saddle, fall in love with it and swear by it and think everything else is terrible. Um, that's kind of like that with a lot of stuff. So drop a comment below what saddle you love and prefer and what you have on your bike right now. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you guys in the next one.